Alright, so, welcome back to another review. This time we're looking at the FIO Q3 Portable DAC Amp Unit uh, Combo. So as you may recall, my first experience with a portable DAC amp was the iFi Micro IDSD signature, and I was blown away by how clear and competent the device was, despite being a small, portable unit. However, it also had a price tag that was a little too hard to swallow for something that was to serve as a side unit as opposed to being my main at my desktop setup. So I was pretty excited to take a listen to the FIO Q3 since it offers many similar features while boasting a very competitive price tag. But those savings can only be worth it if and only if the unit also sounds clean and functions competently. Now before we begin, do me a quick favor and do the thing with the the things down below, the whole like and subscribe thing for the helping me get to the 3k subs thing, you know, that thing. So, let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. Now as far as the contents are concerned, you get the FIO Q3, of course, a USB-A to USB-C table, why would I say table? A USB-C to USB-C dongle, a lightning to USB-C dongle, a 3.5mm tip ring sleeve to 3.5mm tip ring sleeve dongle, a total of four thick rubber bands to help you tie the device to your smartphone or DAP. A translucent slip resistant silicone pad so you can place the device on a flat surface or to prevent the Q3 from scratching up against your music player. A mesh carrying pouch, the quick start guide, and the warranty card. So yeah, it does come with a neat little bundle of accessories that you can definitely use and take advantage of with the Q3. Now let's jump into the build and I.O. of the device. This thing feels absolutely solid. I'm squishy. I... I I'm squeezy. I am, I am squeezing, squeezing it, it now. now. Even as I am squeezing it now, there's less flex here than on the iFi Micro IDSD signature. Um, by the way, individual review. But of course, that is to be expected considering this unit is far thinner than this one. Quick size comparison between the signature, you can see it right there. It is noticeably, noticeably smaller and more compact. And this thing is already more compact. Now a quick size comparison against the IDSD Diablo, and by the way, there is an upcoming review for this one, and a comparison between this one and the signature, so keep an eye out for that. All of the knobs and switches feel pretty solid and have a reasonably satisfying click to them. Look here, listen to this. I'm gonna hold it up against the microphone and I'm gonna turn it on and off. Just listen to this. Pretty nice, pretty satisfying. So let's start at the front, then we'll progress to the back. That's what she said. So on the front, you got a 3.5 millimeter output port that can double as a line in port, more on that later, a 2.5 millimeter balanced output, a 4.4 millimeter balanced output, the RGB indicator light, and the power slash volume knob. Nothing on the sides of the device, nor the top and bottom. Now on the rear of the unit, you got a base switch, a button that controls the gain, filters, and resets the device, a USB Type-C port, which is in charge of power and data, and the charging switch. Now we get into the functions. So this is a portable DAC amp capable of running headphones through single-ended and balanced outputs. Operating the device is pretty simple. To turn it on, just turn the volume knob clockwise until it clicks, and then adjust it to your desired volume level. Turning it off works pretty similarly. Simply turn it counterclockwise until it clicks, and the RGB light turns off. Now to switch gains, single press the gain button. If the green light is off, the Q3 is in low gain. If it is on, the Q3 is in high gain. You can double press this same button to switch between filters. Press and hold the button if you want to reset the settings on the unit. This should take about 15 seconds to get it done. Make sure to hold that button until the RGB light turns off entirely. The RGB light on the front of the unit can glow various colors and has multiple meanings. Feel free to pause the video right here to read about what each color means. To utilize the DAC in the device, simply connect it to the device of your choice utilizing one of the included cable slash dongles. If you are connecting to a Windows device, you can visit Fios website and go ahead and download the most current version of the driver. With any other device, simply plug and play, you're good to go. Now to bypass the DAC in the unit, you simply plug in the line-in cable from the other DAC or device to the 3.5mm port on the Q3. Now just plug in your headphones to either one of the balance ports, and if you see the RGB light turn blue, you should be in the clear. You'll be able to adjust the volume using the knob on the Q3. If you want to keep the USB source plugged in, that's fine as well. Just make sure nothing is playing through it, or the Q3 will give priority to the USB source and just swap. 
Now last of all, to charge the unit, you must remember to flip that charging switch on. Otherwise, it'll conserve the source's power and only draw data from the device it is connected to. If the Q3 runs out of battery, it will enable charging regardless of the switch's position and will continue to charge until it is topped off. Just an FYI. So now let's talk about the performance of the device. This device is rated to last approximately 10 hours on a single charge. In my experience with it, it lasted around 9 hours on Logan before it finally died off. So it should still give you a pretty solid workday's worth of juice. Now it will be set to 16-bit 48 kHz by default before installing the generic USB DAC driver. As recommended by the Quick Start Guide, I went ahead and updated the driver through fio.com slash supports. The process was relatively straightforward, though I did encounter a little, a little hiccup. When going through the wizard, the update was incomplete, so it told me to restart my computer for the changes to take effect. After doing so, the Q3 no longer appeared anywhere. So I checked through the sound settings, device manager, and other areas to no avail. After reopening the wizard and trying to update it again, it was successful. The Fio then reappeared under my sound settings as Fio Q series. So after updating the drivers, it will be set to 24-bit 44.1 kHz. As with every DAC I've had the option with, I went ahead and set it to 192 kHz instead. Now let's talk about the sound, and there actually is something notable to talk about here. It actually adds a little bit of warmth to the low end, particularly in between the sub bass and mid bass. Now this could have been my imagination, but it also smooths out the highs a, t a teensy little bit, just a, just a little bit. Yet despite this slight coloration in the sound, the unit sounds quite clean and clear. I'm glad to see that the portable aspect did not serve as a detriment for this unit at all. When switching between the low and high gain, high gain made the HD600 sound a bit shoutier during core pride, but also increased sub bass presence a smidge. It generally hyped the sound a little. Thankfully, the difference in volume is very, very minimal. On my HD600s, going from low to high gain took me from around 4pm to around 5pm on the dial. This means that depending on your sound preference, you can easily choose to utilize most headphones, on either setting. Now as mentioned before, there are a total of two filters to choose from. Sharp roll off and short delay slow roll off. I tried a handful of tracks from a handful of genres and for the for the life of me, I, I couldn't really hear a difference at all. So I tried using the HD 800S instead. Still couldn't tell. So I left it on the default setting, sharp roll off. Now there's no way for you to tell what particular filter it's on because there's no LED screen or anything. So just go ahead and remember, if you don't remember what setting it's on, press and hold that button for 15 seconds, the LED will turn off and the unit will reset. Now as for that base switch, it was, it was a no-go on the HD 600s. Unfortunately, it introduced bloat and boominess, which really detracted from pretty much every genre I listened to. Only on tracks with nothing but an electronic bass note down there, like, like Mask Off by Future, will the bass switch be a relatively positive change. But then I recalled that other pairing that sounded so delicious with the other device's bass boost enabled. So I decided to bust out the High Feynman Arias, and oof, that this just won't do. It just won't do. Ultimately, the area of the bass that this emphasizes is just far too high up the frequency response to sound clean and enjoyable. Its reach into the mid bass gives it too much boominess and can muddy the sound quite a bit, even on the high fi minarias. Now let's get to the conclusion here. So let's go ahead and sum up exactly what this is to me. The Fio Q3 is a portable DAC amp that allows you to listen to clean and powerful audio from a USB source of your choosing through single-ended or balanced connections for approximately 9 hours. You can use it as a standalone amplifier as well, though some conditions must be met. There is no bass switch on this device. That is to say, there is a bass switch, but but don't. Just don't. Seriously, don't. Base switch equals no. Quick mess. At its current price point, I can easily see this thing being a great versatile budget pickup, even for someone who's starting out with a desktop setup. Think about it. You plug it into your PC via USB, plug it into your Nintendo Switch through the 3.5mm port, then just unplug a couple of cables to take it with you on the road. Now, I really liked the Fio Q3. If I didn't already have a full-blown DAC and amp at my setup, or if I traveled more often, I would absolutely pick this up for 
myself. For my particular use case, however, I don't really have a need for this. It's nearly as clean as the i5 Micro IDSD signature for a fraction of the price. Link in the description to that review, by the way. But the signature's implementation of the base switch and its synergy with the hi fi Minarias make that the better choice for my personal needs. So there you have it, the FIO Q3. Uh, thank you very much for watching this review. I really hope that I turned you on to this thing because it's actually a really, really good unit. And it really is a good starter unit for a lot of people. But anyway, that's where I'm going to end it. Once again, you know what to do down below. I do have a Patreon. Links to all of these things down below. You can use my um, affiliate links. You know, you give me a bit of a kickback and you get yourself a sweet little unit that you might not have known about until today. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next video.